All right, so I figured this close to the holidays, there might be some of you that have someone in their life like me that is very difficult to shop for when it comes to birthdays, Christmas, uh, you know, any sort of gift giving time. So thought I would share a few of the things that I like. So uh, I originally bought this small one like a year ago. I don't even know the amp hours on it. I use this specifically for the electric blanket in my tent. It's tiny, it's lightweight, it's easy to use. This one was one that a buddy of mine sent me. It's called uh, Fantic, F-A-N-T-T-I-K. Over here, it has a one 12 volt uh, DC direct, a, a quick charge 3.0 USB, five volt 2.4 amp USB, um, and then uh, two USB C's, one in 60 watt and one in 3 amp. A couple other uh, DC outputs on the bottom that I'm not familiar with and then two AC plugs in the front. Um, it does have a light on the back side. There are also quick connects for the input as far as um, solar and DC. So that one's awesome. I think I picked this one up for right around hundred bucks. And then <clears throat> if you wanna step up a little higher, this one is the EcoFlow. Uh, this one is the Delta Mini. This is an 887 watt hour. Uh, power bank. A little trick to these is that if you look on eBay in their factory refurbished, so they come in the factory packaging, everything is normal as is. You get them for usually anywhere between 40 to 60 percent off, depending on what kind of sales you're catching, and they also have a better warranty than the factory. So, factory on these is one year, the refurbished comes with a two year. Uh, if you're using something on this, It'll show you how many hours you can run that device for, or if you're charging it, it switches over and tells you how many hours it's going to take to charge. Turn items on and off uh, within the app. So if you're you know, charging your laptop and you don't wanna just leave it connected to the charger all night, you can actually go in the app and turn that DC or AC plug off to where you're no longer trying to charge your laptop. You have five different AC outlets um, on the back side here, a USB-C 100 watt and two USB-A regular and one USB-A fast charge. First aid kits. Recently went hunting out of the five of us that were there on that hunt, four of us ended up falling at one point or another due to the terrain. And not a single one of us had a first aid kit on us while we were out hiking. They were all in the truck. So something like this, even a small one, um, is great to have. Uh, this one it lives in my truck and I didn't even think to grab it to take it with me. So. Uh, my medic is something that I am affiliated with. So if you do click on that link uh, below, it'll send you through to my affiliate and they give me a small portion um, of those proceeds. My medic is uh, HSA. Basically, if you have some sort of uh, work safety program that they give you the card for, you can also purchase these through that program. It is considered part of that. These little Apache cases from Harbor Freight. These things are great to store gear in. They're great for electronics that you want to keep safe. They're watertight. They have pull and pluck foam on the inside of them. They come in a variety of different sizes and they are crazy inexpensive. Uh, the small one here, regular price is uh, I think $12.99. Uh, inside Track Club member, then you get, uh, they were on sale for like $8.99. And this one is, um, Normally $39.99, uh, I caught a couple of these on sale for $19.99. So if you watch the sales, you can get those. Lots of room, watertight, airtight. Um, they are TSA approved, so they are lockable. They have nice little metal rings around the locks. There's a nice pressure relief valve on the front. Having this knob on the front where you can just release that pressure and allow it to open a lot easier is nice. So these are kind of cool. Um, they are slip on ice cleats. So basically stick the toe of your shoe in here. This pulls around the heel and then they have cleats on the bottom of them um, for ice and snow. These are super small. They are crazy lightweight 
And if you do need to get out in the ice and snow, it's really easy to throw these on over whatever you're wearing. Here is a, uh, it's like a battery bank, but it's also a jump starter. This one is a, it gives a 500 amp um, starter boost, uh, peak current of 1000 amps. So it's pretty inexpensive. This one is the Loft Tech jump starter. Uh, pretty inexpensive, comes with a cord to charge it with, as well as if you have a USB-C device, it does have an output that you can go, has a flashlight on it. There's a button on the front that will show the charge status. After about 10 seconds or so, um, the light on this will go either red or green. Um, it will stop transferring and it also will not be on a start boost. What you have to do is disconnect it from your battery, unplug this from the power bank, re-plug it in and reconnect it to your battery and do that. Like the battery on my other car was so dead, I ended up having to do it three times before I finally was able to crank it and fire it um, and get it running. So something to keep in mind, uh, I know there's a lot of other ones out there and a lot easier to utilize. This one was like $45. I know some of those are up in the $100, $150, $200 dollar range. Definitely make sure that you are looking at the cranking amps as well as potentially the cold cranking amps if you're purchasing this for uh, someone. The unit that you buy may not have enough juice to actually even assist them. So, um, if you, you know, obviously we want our loved ones to be safe. So if you're purchasing something for someone, make sure that it's gonna be the right uh, application for them. Wet weather poncho, crazy lightweight, um, easy to store. The first time somebody has to use this, like I keep this one behind the seat of my truck with my jump start box, the ice cleats, a few other odds and ends. If somebody gives you this and you have to use it and it keeps you dry, you are definitely going to appreciate them. You're gonna love the thought of it, um, even if it's only something you use once or twice a year. And these are crazy cheap. Um, I think it was like less than $20 sitting on the shelf at Walmart. So if you're looking for stocking stuffers, last minute gifts, Great option here. This one is made by Frog Talks. Rechargeable headlamps. Um, these are great. I would say make sure that you find one that tilts. Uh, this one came in a two pack. Um, if you get rechargeable ones, getting a two pack is always a great idea. They can have one charging while they're using the other one. First button is power on. I keep it on red light. I would say other option or other aspect to make sure of when you're looking at gifts, especially headlamps, is red light. So low light, um, red light in the dark, this helps you keep your night vision. Um, and then the other button will cycle through the different ones. You've got strobing red, you've got a spot white, uh, low level spot white, and then kind of a flood white, and then low level flood white back to red. The third button over here, it is a uh, motion detection on and off. So you can wave your hand and it'll turn it off. Wave it again and it'll turn it on. I, I never really had a use for that uh, for me personally, but it's kind of a neat feature to have. Uh, these are uh, micro USB rechargeable. Say that if you are um, going to purchase these for someone else, kind of maybe pay attention to what kind of chargers they have uh, because you know that they're gonna have those with them. So like if they have the new iPhone has the USB-C, so maybe find headlamps that have a USB-C recharger so that it's kind of universal. They don't have a bunch of extras, even like with the jump start pack, that one has a USB-C recharger. So if you had a USB-C headlamp and phone, you could also use that pack to charge headlamp and phone. So kind of think through that stuff when you're thinking about gifts for other people. Uh, we'll move right along kind of in the lighting. This light is the Kick-Ass Products uh, mini flashlight. It'll still kind of glow through the sticker here, but for the most part, two sides. So when it magnets, it actually shines out and down when you stick it to something. It has a glass breaker on the end of it. Um, it is removable. The battery end cap is waterproof. It's got a little seal on there, makes it nice. And then on the inside of it, you have the USB-C to recharge and then a USB, a USB excuse me, um, in order to utilize this as a power bank also. Um, kind of neat in that aspect of it. And then, it's kind of cool with the light mode. So first click gives you a spot coming out the front here. Spot, second click is low on the other one, medium, high, and then it goes to amber, it goes to red, blue, and then as like an SOS, it goes to red and blue flashing. 
and then off. As you saw in the beginning, if you have it on one setting and then you want to turn it off, you don't have to cycle through all of them. You just press and hold the tail switch and it'll turn itself off. So really a cool idea. Um, these are like $25. They might be a little bit more now, but I, I believe they were $25 uh, when I purchased this one. They do have a bigger version that I believe is $50. Uh, I have a pair of these, kind of the same thought process with the headlamps. I'd rather have two of the $25 ones than one of the $50. One can be charging while I'm using the other one, or I can be using them in two different places. So it's something to think about. All right, a couple other lights to talk about here. This is a Streamlight MicroStream. Um, this one is the one that takes batteries, it's not rechargeable. Uh, I believe it's like 25 or 27 lumens. Um, I like these because they have the double clip. So it has one clip that'll go to your pocket and then another one that you can clip like onto the brim of your cap real easily. Super small. This is the one I carry in my pocket every day and have for years. Uh, this one is the Nebo Da Vinci 450 Flex. So this one just kind of caught my attention. Um, it has a magnet on the back. It has an adjustable pattern. So you can go real wide or you can dial it in and it gets real small. So um, as you dial it in real small, <clears throat> you can also see it has a rechargeable port. This one is a micro USB, so kind of a bummer that it's not USB-C with today's technology, you would hope, but cool little light. It also has the double clip where it can go to the back or to a ball cap. Um, this one I leave <clears throat> in the overhead rack in my truck now, um, but it does have multiple modes. So it is high, low, you gotta triple click it double click whatever anyways it does have a strobe also so these are ones that i found on amazon you've seen all of the um the, like big overhead lamps i i won't even mention names right now <clears throat> but their price points definitely show their popularity these ones are about 30 bucks they have several light modes so there's a low a medium a high and an sos mode um this one actually just died. <clears throat> the other one is overhead providing light, but they come with this little ball socket that you can maneuver all around any which way. And then it threads into this tripod here. So these are also magnetic. You can stick them to the side of a vehicle, anything like that. These are about 30 bucks. These um, go up to eight and a half feet tall. They extend up on multiple levels. Make sure I don't even hit the ceiling on this one. So I actually ran out of room. It hit the ceiling in my house. So <clears throat> maybe they go up to nine feet then because I definitely don't think I have eight and a half ceilings. Anyways, great option. These stands, uh, I believe a two pack of them is 60. And then these lights, again, $30 each. So for a pair of lights to, to have camp lights is still less than one of the other competitors. The uh, tripod comes in a case here. Nice zip off case and the light, there is enough room for the light to fit in the case also. All right, moving on. If you have someone who has a rooftop tent, these levels are pretty cool back to front and left to right. So all you gotta do is drop them in your cup holder while you're trying to park and level out. And you can see whether or not you're level by yourself. Zolios, I did a full video on this one previously. I'm still running the same one, still works great. They're, I believe right now, they're like uh, $150, um, normally 200. I'll leave a link below uh, to that one. Um, great, great unit for satellite messaging. So as long as you have a clear view of the sky, you can get text messages to loved ones or uh, send the SOS for help if you need it. So awesome unit to have, um, great gift idea. You know, the initial purchase is usually the most expensive part. Monthly, there's plans from 25, 35 and up. All right, radios. 
Uh, most people that we know in the off-road community run, as far as handhelds, they run either Midland, Baofeng, anything like that. Um, I like the Baofengs. They're crazy cheap. These ones right here with the standard battery on them are like less than $20 right now is right here. So that's just this extended battery compared to the regular one. <clears throat> uh, I believe they're right around $20 right now. The extended battery is kind of neat because it does have a charging port on the side of it. So if you use these a lot in your vehicles, um, you can charge it on the go or charge it, charge just the battery on its own. So, uh, you know, you can buy somebody a radio with an extended spare battery for around $40. Great option to have. Make sure you are following all local laws, whether you're running GMRS or ham radio, and that's all I'm going to say about that. Uh, Midland is a great one. Obviously, the other end of this is in my truck. I did a full video on that as far as a stealth install. This is their 25-watt uh, version. Great, great option for a built-in radio, so I can run this in my truck at all times. I don't have to worry about charging. I still keep these in my truck if I'm going to get out and spot somebody or if I'm going to hike away from camp um, with the kids in camp. It's a good idea where you're like, hey, if you're leaving camp, take a radio. Good options. Always good to have extras. So some of you are going to laugh at this one, and I did the same thing at first. They are electric hand warmers. And I saw them, I thought it was kind of gimmicky. I was like, just wear gloves, put your hands in your pockets. Like you don't need hand warmers until I got to use them. These things are awesome. Um, one of the nicest parts is that if you have lower back pain, you can take these, put them in the pouch and use them like a heating pad wherever you're gonna go. So these go in a bunch of different heat ranges. Yeah, four heat settings um, and they're magnetic. They pop apart for two individual units. So if you want to have a longer period of time for using them, you can use one at a time. You can use both of them at the same time. You just kind of hold them in your hands, put your hands in your pockets. They keep your hands warm. Under 30 bucks, there's a million of them on Amazon. Um, I'll link these ones. I like these ones. Make sure that it says it either comes in singles or pairs because I made that mistake with the first ones I got. This is kind of under the uh, everyday carry kind of uh, aspect of it, and we can go from mild to wild. This one is a Gerber, I don't even remember what it's called. I'll put the name down here, and it'll also be linked below. But I thought this was kind of cool. I bought it, and now it lives on my desk. Let's go through some of the tools here. Um, there are no locks. So on the tool aspect of it, so keep that in mind. So first thing we have is a bit driver, standard quarter inch bit driver. It does come with a Phillips and flathead. Um, it's a little magnetic in there, so keeps everything nice and retained. Next up is, I believe they call it a, an awl. Uh, it's kind of like a little mini blade. It, it's relatively sharp. And the last item as far as the tools in this initial part here are scissors. So handy little scissors. Um, they've got a nice long uh, cutting surface on them so they work really well and they are sharp and they stay sharp. So I've used these for I don't know a couple years now. Um, pretty cool idea and then it does have a regular blade it is uh, more of a sheep's foot kind of design on the blade. I think that's how I originally found this because I'm a fan of the sheep's foot blade. Um, this blade does have a uh, line lock on it to, as far as like it won't just fold up on you. You can hit it and fold it closed. And last but not least are the two pieces on the end. This one does have like almost like a little bit of an impact tool where you could use it to like drive in tent stakes if you really wanted to, but it flips up and has a bottle opener. Um, and then I think you can also use it as a pry bar, but kind of cool that it has a flip up bottle opener and uh, stows away nicely. So these are super cool and you can check those out. Next, as we're going up is a sharpener. So most uh, people that are into everyday carry stuff, especially knives or anything of that nature, nature 
are going to use them. And if you use them, you need a sharpener. So this is one that I found um, many years ago. I believe I bought this one at Cabela's or Bass Pro or something like that. Uh, there's a bunch of different companies out there that make them. It's just a diamond sharpener. This one's kind of cool because it has a flat spot on it. So if you're working with a larger edge, um, it's got a nice large flat spot that you can get into. It also has uh, rounded places on it that you can get in um, and work around, you know, smaller blades and kind of get around the tips and stuff. It also, I don't think the camera's gonna pick it up, but it has a groove on the back side of it here that is utilized for um, serrated uh, knives, serrated blades. So you can actually still sharpen serrated blades. I have a bunch of knife sharpeners and when I need to sharpen my knife, I still go find this one every time. Uh, again, these are like less than $20. Uh, I will link one below um, to where you can grab one for that person in your life. They do have a clip, makes a great stocking stuffer. All right, next up is this little knife here. It's a Civivi, Civici, I don't know how you pronounce it, um, but it has a really nice deep pocket clip. They come in a couple different colors, a couple different blade coatings, and they are a assisted open. Um, I believe they're right around 40 or $50 uh, if you catch them on sale. That It's just a nice lightweight kind of utility knife. Um, it does have a line lock on it uh, for the blade. It's nice, smooth uh, action on it. For the price, you can't hardly beat it. If you know somebody that, you know, every day carries a knife or needs an extra one for their pack or vehicle or something like that, these are a great option. Um, they come in a really cool little, like, zip-up pouch, too, so it's kind of a neat presentation when you get it. Make a great gift. Um, like I said, these are kind of on the mild side. Uh, for price-wise, at $30 or $40, uh, for kind of the features that you get, they they do carry an edge really well, um, and I haven't had any issues with it. This one just kind of lives in my bag, and it works really well. The next up here is my Benchmade. So they are... a little bit more on the spendy side uh, as far as what you might consider for like an everyday carry pocket knife. All right, sorry, the GoPro died. So I don't even know where I was. Uh, everyday carry, Benchmade, uh, four or five years old. This one is, I don't even know if you can find this one anymore, but it's Sheep's Foot Design. This is the Mini Griptilian. They're probably around 130 now. Um, if you can find them around that price range, great. This is the full-size Griptilian. Um, I'm not a fan of serrated blades. It was the only time I had seen a sheep's foot in the full-size Griptilian in probably a couple of years. So I took advantage um, of the price and I think I got this one on sale for like 125. Multi-tools. Uh, this is the Leatherman Signal. This is a great uh, gift for someone. They come in a bunch of different colors now. Um, it has a quarter inch bit driver. There's a bottle opener. There's an impact tool. There's a whistle, um, ferrule rod, steel, wire cutters. There's all the typical tools down inside, screwdriver, bottle opener. You still have a regular knife with serrades. And then on the other side here is also a saw. I believe these are just under a hundred. Uh, nice little carry case. These are great to just throw in someone's pack. They're relatively lightweight. This is my favorite Leatherman. Um, this is the Wave. This case also stores your bit kits. So all these different bits are for different things. There's a bunch of different uh, metric and standard in Allen wrenches, torque wrenches, flat heads, uh, more torque, Phillips heads, uh, different types of Phillips heads. So bunch of different bits. There's a bit extension. They make one the ratchets now. I, I don't necessarily think you need the ratcheting one, but the extension is nice. 
As far as the wave, it's got a kind of a full serrated uh, blade on one side, a diamond like sharpener and file. I actually have used this sharpener to sharpen other knives previously. Regular blade, full size with no serrations, and then it has the wood saw on the inside, pliers, wire cutters like usual. The one that's different about this is that eyeglass. Uh, type micro screwdriver and this little bit is replaceable. Uh, when you buy these bit kits separately, it'll generally come with an extra one of those. Scissors, nice part about this one is that everything locks. So when you open it, it's got a nice positive lock. You can use it in whatever uh, fashion you need to to get in there and kind of get a good hold on it. Lock goes across the back and it'll close right down in there. On the other side here is a bottle opener and your bit driver, and here are, is where your bits interchange. So this one's great. I would say that if I was heading out camping for the weekend and I had to grab one, I would definitely take the Leatherman Wave, but this setup with the bits and the case and everything, you're probably looking at close to 200. There's also one, if you look around on Amazon, there's some with some great reviews that are very similar to this. I'm not going to link it. Uh, you can do your own research. Uh, I, I think that it's almost too close of a copy to Leatherman. They definitely had to copy them. So um, I know Leatherman is a great U.S. company, so I am not going to uh, put other ones out there like that that are just trying to copy it. Some of you guys might laugh, but... If you have that special someone in your life and they have a favorite kind of shoe, buy them a pair. Um, I've been running these shoes. These are the Merrill Moab 2s. Um, I've been running them. I like the low tops and the mid tops uh, I, for years now. I would say probably four or five years. Every time they're on sale, I get another pair. It seems like sooner or later you find something that you like and then you can't find it again. Um, I just picked these up for like 50 bucks. So for a great shoe like that, well worth it. Recovery gear. So soft shackles are great. I like Gear America. But I like to support those who support us. Um, I am not affiliated with them. I'm not sponsored by them in any sort of way. I did pay full retail for all of my recovery gears. Make sure that you are paying attention to the um, working rating and load rating on them. So it'll probably run you 80 bucks or so for a pair. When I went to order those, the uh, Gear America's gold ring was out of stock. I ended up picking this one up on Amazon just because I needed one right then. But what this is, if you're unfamiliar, is it is a snatch block um, for synthetic line, basically. You run your soft shackle through the middle of it. This can connect over to your tree, bumper, whatever you need to, and then your winch line can go through here and you can redirect to get a different angle of pull. Had I had this set up um, available to me when Josh got his truck stuck on Montana Mountain in that ice, uh, we probably wouldn't have had to leave his truck overnight and I could have redirected my winch line and get it over there. Kinetic rope. Um, this is a 30 foot kinetic rope with a 28,500 pound braking strength. Uh, 7 8 inch. These are awesome. If you know somebody that's out in the sand or the snow or anything like that a lot, get them a kinetic rope. Well worth the investment. Make sure you keep them somewhere like out of the sun and stuff if they're not in use. Keep them clean and try not to run them over. Kind of a couple of silly uh, items that are things that I grab all the time. So useful, thoughtful items. Titanium extra length spoon. I could use probably six of these and still not have enough. They're great. Uh, they're very useful, extra length for anybody that eats like the mountain house meals, stuff like that. Super easy to clean, always handy to have, and they're super cheap. I think they're like less than $10 on Amazon. This one is uh, by Gerber. It's called the Complete. Um, and this one is kind of a multi-tool in itself. So you have a uh, spatula with a rubber edge that you can clean out edges of stuff. You have a spork, a spoon, and then this one is a multi-tool. It has a uh, bottle opener, a can opener that I've actually used this to open a few cans before. It's a pain, but you can do it. And then this over here is actually a vegetable peeler. 
One other thing that's nice about these is that these two pieces will actually combine together to create tongs. It all folds up nicely together, makes it pretty compact. They're relatively inexpensive, um, but I usually keep one in, like I keep this one in the box over here, and then I'll keep this one in my other um, camp box. So I always have like one in each. All right, last thing I'm gonna bore you guys with is my camp box. This is kind of my mini overnight box. Sorry, big lots. They were 10 bucks. They are IP67 waterproof. Um, this is the 18 liter or 19 quart one, and it's like the perfect size for me. So, roll of towels. Um, I keep a bunch of Mountain House meals in here. Um, some soft silicone measuring cups for the Mountain Meals. Hot cocoa, coffee, ramen, all that kind of stuff. But the other thing I keep in here is my stove. Now these stoves are basically, uh, most people are familiar with like a jet boil, anything like that. This brand is actually called Blue, B-L-U-U. -U. I will link it below. The lid has a uh, strainer as well as like a sipping cup on it if, you're, if you want to drink out of it. It has a fuel canister stabilizer and then we'll just kind of do it this way. A 1.1 liter canister, fuel, burner, it's just a screw on self-igniting burner. So this will allow you to drop this on and then it kind of locks into place um, also. So that'll allow you to Snap that on there and utilize, you know, if you got a different pot, pan, whatever to throw on here, you can do that and keep everything good. This one actually has a wind uh, deflector inside of it. So if you're gonna be utilizing this one, make sure you light this before you put it on there. Otherwise it seems like it doesn't get enough oxygen. I keep these wrapped up in blue towels to keep them from rubbing on each other and rubbing in the bottom as I'm bouncing down roads. Seems to work pretty well. One thing that I do in my bin is I keep the large fuel canister in the bin right next to this and I try not to use the small one in here. My thought process on that is that if I am out for an overnight or anything happens, I need to leave my vehicle, I can grab this and a couple of meals and I know I'm okay for a day or two. With the canister that's in here, I don't really have to question how much fuel's in it. This one, if I'm utilizing it and I'm out camping and it dies on me or goes empty, I can use this one for the rest of the trip and then swap out and get another one of these when I get home. Uh, it's just kind of easier in that aspect in my mind. Hopefully that helps some of you guys. Last minute gift ideas. Most of this, these items are available on Amazon. Um, I'm gonna link as many of them as I can below. I, I hope it helps you guys. Most of them are really affordable. And uh, let me know if you guys want more kind of gear review type of stuff like this. I know I've been doing some of the uh, Tech Tip Tuesday stuff, which is more like on the vehicle. But if you guys want more gear related stuff, then let me know. Uh, drop a comment and I'll see what I can do. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.